welcome back to part two of our top ten best items in Divinity Original Sin 2 videos. Um, I guess it's kind of a top 20 uh, items, uh, but we're going to start off right here in the middle of the Arks Town Square. This is kind of the main trader hub of Arks, which uh, technically it's Act 3, but it's I call it Act 4. It's the fourth island, it's a new act, I don't care about a 3-act structure. So, uh, before we get started, if you haven't seen the first part of uh, this two-part video series, uh, part one goes through all the items that I think are the top 10 best items in the game prior to getting to Arks. Uh, because a lot of good items are in ARC, so we're going to give ARC its own video. And we can actually get through over half of this top ten list. We can get through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them uh, just walking around buying stuff for the most part. Uh, some of them we don't actually buy, but uh, we're going to start over here. Uh, we have a little bit of lag because uh, I'm actually uploading the first part to YouTube as I talk, so it is going to be a little low, well, a little slow for a second here. All right, so we have uh, Trader F Fianola. I never actually say these names out loud. I just read them. Fianola. Okay, it's like Fiona, but there's an extra you. consonant. In it. Anyway, here, yeah? um, oh, no, syllable. Um, so we're gonna trade to with her. Work. Uh, she has this two-handed hammer, sorry, two-handed mace right here. Um, and this is called, I, and all these names in Act 4, the vast majority of them, I have no idea how to pronounce them. So, if I'm saying them wrong, you know the actual correct way to say them, feel free to roast me in the comments. Uh, but this is Vordalamus, I guess is how you say it. Uh, this is a two-handed mace. It has 25% crit chance, which is very good. That's going to be a common theme for a few of these. 25% um, crit chance. Again, um, it gives three strength and needs 14 strength to wield. So, I mean, you only need plus one strength elsewhere in your gear to wield this if it's not going on a strength-based character. So, if you want to just throw this on, like, a mage and just give them 25% crit chance, that is a perfectly acceptable thing to do. That is very good. Um, also, two constitution, two warfare, uh, one turn knockdown, so not, not as, you know, good as uh, Lohar's with that aspect, but it has a 25% chance to knock down. So you'll knock them down more often, but it'll only be for one turn. And this one has 50% cleave damage, so that cleave damage will hit nearby enemies in a decent range, because um, it is a two-handed weapon, so it's got a little bit more range than the one-handed weapons. Um, so... It can knock down multiple people with one swing, uh, so that is very good. It also gives you the challenge skill, um, which is also very nice. We'll go over that in just a second. Uh, but yeah, three strength almost fulfills its own strength requirement. Some constitution, warfare, so the warfare is giving you more damage. Constitution, it's just nice. You can't really use this with a shield because it's two-handed, but I guess more health is occasionally useful. Um, and a lot of crit chance, knock down, very good. Um, but it gives you the challenge skill which is very good. I have it over here. The best part about this skill is that when the Definitive Edition came out, which was a while ago now, but it still feels new to me, um, when the Definitive Edition came out, this one got changed from costing, I believe it used to cost 1 AP. It's just free now. It doesn't cost any action points. Um, so use it in combat, and it'll mark an enemy. And if that enemy dies in the next two turns, you heal, you get a damage bonus, and you restore some armor. Um, if they survive, though, if they make it two more turns, they get the bonuses instead, and you take damage. But because it's free, costs Business no action points to cast, you. Uh, you can use this right before something's about to die, it's and then you could use something like Tentacle Lash that is an auto-hit, right? Still like something where paladins. like it physically cannot miss, right? Paladins and something where you the know the minimal Light amount, that 820 in that little pop-up window there. Something that you know can kill them, and just boom, you heal, you get some extra armor, you get a damage boost, it's great. Fantastic uh, weapon. Uh, so that is Vordalamus, if I'm saying it right. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Um, and moving over to this vendor here. There's going to be a lot less loading in this one, and I'm not going to do the annoying little uh, screen shake that was in part one, because I was not a fan of that, but once I did it, I was like, I gotta commit. Um, so there's actually going to be like two, maybe three loads in here, but we're just going to be running around for the bulk of this. Uh, next unique item is also a vendor in ARCs will sell it. Uh, again, I don't say these out loud. Uh, Luranta Temva, I guess? I call them lightning pants is what I call them in my head. I'm like, oh yeah, the lightning pants. 
uh, because they give you the skill Superconductor, which is a nice skill. Um, so these ones require 14 strength, and they give you plus 2 to 5 out of the 6 ability scores, attribute scores, I forget what they're, I think it's attribute scores. Uh, th 5 out of the 6 attributes, everything but memory. So it gives you plus strength, plus finesse, plus intelligence, plus constitution, plus wits. So, literally, any build can make use out of these. Now, they are strength-based, so the physical armor is heavily skewed. Um, but they also give you a little bit of telekinesis, which can be useful. Uh, two Aerotherge, which is very useful, because that means if you slap these on somebody, uh, they have enough Aerotherge to learn Teleport and Nether Swap, which can be very good to have. Uh, the air resistance is fine. Uh, superconductors... It's not a melee skill, but it's based, it's centered on you, so it's like semi-melee skilled. Uh, you're going to use it on people who are basically in melee range. Um, so having that extra air resistance is nice, because you might get some backlash damage if you're on water. I'm in the plus two movement, that, that's always nice. But the main thing is it gives plus two to everything. It gives you superconductor. Uh, it's, it's great. I'm going to actually buy that. I don't know if I already have superconductor on anybody. Oh, I hit the wrong button there. Uh, but Superconductor, I believe I put it on Sabeel. Yeah, Sabeel doesn't even... Like, she's a necromancer in here. Like, she, she, I'm using the whole Bloodstorm combo that I also put in another top 10 most fun combo videos. Got that one rocking here. Uh, with, you know, skin graft, adrenaline, Bloodstorm, all that. But she has Superconductor because it's just really fucking nice. Big area effect. Shocks them all if they're wet, which she has rain to make them wet. Does extra damage. Will stun them. Great... Great skill, those pants, great item. Uh, so that was the lightning pants, which, uh, Luranta Tembla. Alright. Uh, moving on up. This one does not have anything that I'm putting on the list. They have a unique bow, but it's not all that great. I'm looking through my list, so this might take me just a second. Yeah, we are going to come up to this vendor. Over here, and again, I have not rendered this, or loaded up this area, so it's going to take a minute for it to render because my computer sucks, so bear with me on that. Uh, but while we're coming over here, there is um, one, or actually there's two vendors over here. This one just sells magic skill books, nothing fancy. Um, this one just sells, I think, just books, and then the item that we're going to talk about here in just a second. The elf raises her head. Uh, so she sells, yeah. Oh, she does sell skill books. Okay, I thought it was just like book books, like with recipes and such. But she also sells these boots right here. Um, Calistes? Calistes? Calistes. I don't know how to say it. But uh, similar to two of the items in a previous video, um, it gives immunity to a status effect. You just cannot be knocked down or crippled or slowed, but mainly for the knockdown is why I like it. Uh, you cannot possibly be knocked down while wearing these boots, which means, once again, phenomenal for a glass cannon build. I'm saying once again in reference to the other video. You should really go watch part one if you haven't watched part one. Uh, so you put these on a glass cannon, they cannot be knocked down. That's just, boom, no chance of being knocked down. Where if you combine it with the other two items I talked about in the first video, that one of them can't be stunned, one of them can't be frozen. So if you have these three items on, you cannot be knocked down, frozen, or stunned. And that's most of what you gotta worry about on a glass cannon, so I love these for my glass cannons. Also, Boots with plus thievery? Fuck yeah, that is awesome. They also give you sneaking, which helps with thievery. By Act 4, you should have enough money to where that's not an issue, but if it is an issue, you can still steal some more. Um, and the finesse and the wits, that's nice. Not a lot. You can get better wits on boots, as you can see to the left, which again, I use some mods on this run to speed up the run. Um, which you can still get those boots normally, I just made it easily accessible to get them, where Trader's inventory refreshes really quick and I can buy the good stuff and ignore the cheap stuff. Um, but, Wits Finesse, always good. Scoundrels, probably good. Even if you aren't a scoundrel-based character, they that increases your crit damage. That's always nice. Movement, always nice. But big deal about these, immune to knockdown. That is why they are on the list. Immunity to knockdown, and I guess the thievery, because you can't get that on boots elsewhere. So, fantastic thing. I keep hitting buttons too Memories. fast. The limbs they uh, but yeah, here. those are the boots there. Calisteus, Calisteus, Calisthenics. Um, but those are very good boots, primarily because of the knockdown. Alright, then we're coming over here. This guy was, I think he was added in the Definitive Edition. Again, my timeline is awful on this game. It just all blends together over the last, like, five years. Uh, but he has quite a few unique items here. Some of them are good, some of them are crap. Um, 
the one that is on this list for sure is this one. Let me double check here. I just have that one listed as poison. I think this one is a normal name, right? Nope, it doesn't. It's, I guess, Rancor. Uh, there's another word, Rancor, that doesn't have the U in there, but uh, I'm just going to call it Rancor. Um, so this one is pretty good. Um, and then this is the other one, Soft Touch, that is on here. All right, so this one right here, it is a dagger that does purely poison damage. So right off the bat, that's weird. It's definitely unique. Holds up to the unique item name there. Um, but also, let's look at what else it's got. It has a 25% chance to crit, or an additional 25% chance. That is on a one-handed weapon. That's on a dagger. The vast majority of two-handed weapons that take up both hand slots only give you 20 on the, the good ones. This is a one-handed one that gives you 25, okay? That is phenomenal. Also, gives you plus three finesse, only requires 14 finesse to wield, so if you combine that with the boots from the last one, that is plenty of finesse to wield this, and uh, it's giving you an extra 25% crit chance. Also, it's got three wits, which is actually like a hidden extra 3% crit chance. So just by having this equipped, you get an additional 28% crit chance, and you can still have another weapon in your other hand to increase crit chance more. Similar to that one, we have uh, this sword right here, but I'm not going to include this one because it makes you blind. Um, it does compensate with that by giving you 100% accuracy, so like your accuracy from being blind isn't a big deal, but if you're going to... You, you need to put this on a melee person, whereas the dagger you can put on a mage and still have full like field of view. Uh, there are ways around the blindness on here, so you can actually attack at a range with spells and stuff and just use this one for the crit chance, but that's a hassle. There's a lot of other items you got to have equipped, and those have their own downsides. you got to compensate with other items. It's just, it's fine. You can use it, but I prefer the dagger because it is just, it's nifty. Um, and if you want to uh, use it on somebody who does have some scoundrel on it, um, you hit somebody and you have a 50% chance to charm them. Charm is an amazing crowd control effect because most good crowd control in the game, hard crowd control, it just gets rid of the enemy's turn. Charm makes them give their turn to you. So instead of them having zero movement, zero action on their turn, you get their movement. You gain their action, which is better, <laughs> you know? It's, it's great. So even if you just use it for crit chance, phenomenal. It's got an empty prune slot, so you could also put finesse on there if you really can't find any other items to get that last bit of finesse. Um, I usually like putting a mystical masterwork rune on there to give even more crit chance, bump it up to 31% crit chance. But if you need to fulfill the finesse requirements, a lightning rune uh, with a rune frame will do that for you. Uh, but yeah, it sets charmed, 28% crit chance, it's phenomenal. I wouldn't actually put it on a rogue, ironically, because it's a dagger. Uh, just because they're not typically going to be focused on the magic damage, and most things in Act 4... Not most things, but there's a lot of undead difficult enemies in Act 4. Some, like, plant things that are just immune to poison, or some that just have very high resistant to poison. So I really wouldn't use it for damage, I would just use it for the extra stats it has. Uh, next up is Soft Touch. Um, I would ignore the healing tears on there. Like, it can be useful, but not very often. The main thing here is 5 intelligence and 5 memory. That 5 memory is huge. Especially when you look at, like, Sabil's uh, skill bar at the bottom here. Like, I have, that's a 3 memory point skill, that's a 3 memory point skill. Slide on over, that's 2 memory points. Um, all these are 1, you know. But that those ones are 3 each, that one's one, uh, 2. Uh, I like having Grass with a Starved on here, that's another 2. Um, and she doesn't need to attack with weapons, so that atrophy that it sets doesn't really matter. It is weird that it gives 5 intelligence, but has 14 finesse as a requirement. There's a lot of weapons in Act 3, or Act 4, sorry. A lot of gear in Act 4 that give finesse. I usually put those on an intelligence-based character like Sabeel. Um, or like this build on Sabeel. Not that Sabeel always has to be intelligence-based. But uh, that's a fantastic item for the memory, for the intelligence. Um, and the atrophy really doesn't affect intelligence builds 99% of the time, unless you're using a staff like a battle mage. And even then, I would rather dual wield swords, but it's it's great. Um, some honorable mentions that this guy sells. Uh, this is very good um, as well. Three intelligence, two memory, 
two Hydrosophist, and it gives you Icebreaker, and when you hit somebody with it, it makes a huge area of ice. It's pretty good, but it doesn't quite make my top 10 in arcs, because there's a lot of items in arcs. Um, also, this one, it's just kind of interesting. Um, you, you hit it, it's always got Spark Striker on, so you just send sparks everywhere. It does pure fire damage, 25% crit, but it's just, you're not going to be able to do any of your melee crowd control. You can't knock down by dealing fire damage, so for that reason, I'm not a huge fan of this one. It's cool, but I don't think it's as good. Uh, same with this one, you can make it good, but there's a lot of stuff to compensate. So these two are on the list, uh, Rancor and Soft Touch. All right, so over here we have the Cathedral Waypoint right there. Uh, from the Cathedral Waypoint, in that very room, you walk over here. Uh, you'll see some uh, devoted pilgrims over here praying to some stuff in the Cathedral. Um, if you uh, pull up a character with some high sneaking, you can come over here. Now, you can do this without sneaking, but it's going to be easier if you sneak. Uh, this statue here... Whoop, zooming in, a little bit of lag for, for slow computer reasons. Uh, this statue here, he's holding a scythe. And you can, there we go, steal that scythe. Lucky find. I'm just gonna, well, I was gonna try and run away. Uh, I'm just gonna talk my way out of the situation. I'm just gonna bribe them, because that usually works. Okay. So, uh, that scythe, keep in mind I am at level 18 right now, uh, that scythe is level 20, right here, Fallon, 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 Jimmy Fallon, I don't know, uh, but this scythe right here, um, it gives 20% crit chance, 3 strength, 2 intelligence, 2 warfare, 1 two-handed, sets decaying on the enemy with a 25% chance, and it's got 50% cleave damage. Uh, this is a fantastic two-handed weapon. Um, all those extra bonuses are nice, but it is level 20 with 50% cleave damage, 20% crit chance. So it's going to hit hard. It's going to hit in a pretty wide sweep. Um, if I were to attack with it, uh, does it show? It does not show the arc when I have it set up like that. Um, but it also has a rune slot. Um, just phenomenal damage. Great weapon. Some people are like, oh, this is the best two-handed weapon in the game. It's good. Don't get me wrong. Um, if you hit level 21 and you buy a divine tier, the gold gear at level 21, it's probably going to be better than this. Uh, but it is, for something you can just reliably find in every single run, pretty fucking good. Uh, the three strength is nice, because I don't think you would use this one on a non-strength character, because you would mainly do that for the crit chance. And there's other stuff with 25% crit chance, so I mean... It almost fulfilling its own strength requirement isn't a big deal, but the extra strength is extra damage, the warfare is extra damage, the two-handed is extra damage. It's nice. Alright, uh, from the cathedral, actually, uh, this room right next to the waypoint, you're just gonna head north up here, and you're gonna get to this closed locked door with some guards outside of it. I'm on protection duty. Lord um, I Between think the chaos I'm gonna Alex. actually have to pickpocket, or not pickpocket, pick, pick the lock. Overthrowing the magisters. So I'm going to turn these well guys away from facing the door. Or is that one walking through? You know, I'm going to... Don't bother me. Yeah, so I actually angled that one wrong. So you're going to want to get these guards to look away oh, from the door. Leave me. Um, I don't know. Oh, that one's there. I didn't even see this guard over here. I don't have time to talk. Okay, so we've got them all looking away. So I can sneak right here, pick the lock open the door while still sneaking and then uh, I believe of course. Dallas ah uh, yeah say so you're looking for Dallas blah 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 now that the doors open you can just walk right in you, uh, with a high persuasion care. character just All say right. you're looking you're around she gives you a and how goes this high persuasion just succeed. It's I think right. you need five persuasion because it's act four. Basically I don't know for sure that you need five, but I have like six persuasion with Red Prince. So you are going to need high persuasion to get in here. You can kill them. That's an option as well. Uh, I prefer to just use high persuasion and do it I hope that way. Right um, I'm missing a skill here. He should have chameleon cloak. Well, I guess if they aren't going to stick around, I can just... Oh, that door's not red. Why is that door not red? Okay. I guess you don't need to sneak there. Alright, now when I got this one earlier, 
Um, I don't want to say a glitch happened, but something happened that I was not expecting. So I'm going to hope that this goes the right way here. So if you move this little bed, and this used to not have to be moved, this little pet basket, it used to just be sitting underneath it. But if you move that, a dagger, yep, dagger popped out and it went away. I do not know why that happened. Okay, interesting. Um, I got a mod active, specifically in case that happened again. So I'm going to show you um, how that should have gone. Uh, when you move it, I don't know if you saw, there was a little dagger that popped out of that bed. Um, and that little dagger normally doesn't phase through the ground like that. I'm actually surprised that it did that twice. I don't know what's wrong with the save file that it did that. It shouldn't. Um, I think if you have the apportation spell, which is something that is a weird spell. I don't think you can normally buy that. Uh, you can just suck that up. Um, but I have a mod on in case something like that happened uh, where I can just buy every unique item in the game from this lady. So the unique item that was supposed to come out of there, or I guess it did, but that was supposed to not phase through, um, was one of these daggers down here. This dagger right there is what should have popped out. It should have been at level 20, not level 18, but should have got a dagger with all these bonuses here. So it would have been a dagger that does some fire damage, which is nice. 10% crit chance, nice. Uh, three finesse, which for a dagger, very nice. Two wits, nice. Two scoundrel, nice. Dual wielding, nice. Set bleeding, nice. Burning, nice. Fantastic. Th and it also grants you terrifying cruelty. Now, unlike the poison damage dagger, this dagger I would absolutely recommend putting on a rogue. Or scoundrel use person. Rogue, uh, uh, what's it? Shadow blade, whatever. Anybody who does damage primarily through dagger attacks, absolutely put this one on them. Because typically, you're going to have two weapons, so like two daggers, so the dual wielding is going to be great. You're going to crit a lot, because you get easy backstabs, so scoundrel, crit damage, fantastic. Uh, the wits, fine. I usually don't care about wits too much on dagger users, because I can just backstab and get automatic crits, same with the 10% crit chance. But, in the rare instance that you can't get them lined up for a backstab, it's still nice to have some base crit chance. And the finesse, extra damage. Now, if you have the torturer talent bleeding and burning will always happen every time through armor i don't know if that was intended with torture talent or if they just said hey that's cool we're going to keep that as a feature but if you have the torture talent any items that have a chance for an effect to happen that torture normally lets go through armor that chance always happens they will always set bleeding and burning if you have torture on these guys so i really like uh taking one of these or taking this dagger uh, mixing it with poison, and then any time I attack somebody with this dagger, they are bleeding, burning, and poisoned. Um, and if you have the gift bag feature, there is a saddest talent, uh, where any melee attacks against bleeding targets deal extra physical damage. Burning targets, you'll deal extra fire damage, and poison targets, you'll deal extra poison damage. So it's like the first one just weakens them, and then you just keep dealing more and more damage. It's phenomenal. Uh, also gives you Terrifying Cruelty, which is a very good skill, um, especially since you're going to be mixing up the fire damage on this one, because uh, it goes through magic armor, blocking it, grants fear on them, which just makes them kind of run away, which gives you an opportunity attack if you have Opportunist, or if you've got them flanked with another melee target. It's just a very, very good dagger. Um, and if you have any character in your party that uses daggers, you should give them this when you get to arcs. Now, it will start off at level 20. This mod just sets them all to whatever level you are, so ignore the damage numbers and the level. All the blue numbers are going to stay the same. Uh, I just, I don't know why it glitched through there. So this is a fantastic item for rogues. Dagger users in general should use it. Um, I, again, need to stop clicking stuff too fast there. All right, we actually need to load up for the next couple of items. Um, we are going to have one, two, three more, and they are all going to be kind of finesse-based. All right, so we're going to skip over to that right about now. Okay, so our next item, um, there is a demon lady. Uh, you don't obviously know right from the get-go that she's a demon, uh, but she is. Um, she's on the... Let's see, east side of the town square, uh, there's a small little row of building. I think it's like two buildings, uh, but in her basement, uh, there's there's some demons to fight, uh, there's, she'll pop down here, 
Um, she's the one who offers you a loan. If you find that lady in arcs on the east side of the, like, far east from the town square, like, heading a straight line down, um, you'll find her home there. Um, she has a chest in her basement that has this chest piece in it, uh, Nazad Hanola. Uh, gives you five finesse, three intelligence, fire resistance, water resistance, huntsman, scoundrel, movement, reflects 20% of the damage you take as damage back to the attacker, and it's finesse armor, so it's got a pretty even split of physical and magical armor. Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty, pretty good. If you look on the right, that's a level 18 strength armor, which is always heavily skewed towards physical. And if you look, even though it is, it is two levels higher, but if you look at the new armor on the left there, it's got more physical armor on a finesse piece than something only two levels lower on a uh, divine gear strength piece. So it does have a lot of armor. Um... Which is pretty great. It's also got 5 finesse, and it only requires 14 total finesse. Meaning you can throw this on literally any character. Because uh, they all start with a base 10 on everything, so that fulfills its own requirements. Uh, the only way you're going to have lower than 10 finesse without this on is if in the uh, Act 3 Academy you did the thing that gives you minus finesse. In which case, I mean, you can still find a lot of other gear, that's most of which are in this video, that give you more finesse that can fulfill this requirement. It's great, gives you lots of gear, or gives you lots of stats, gives you lots of bonuses, has a rune slot. Um, because it has so much finesse, and because it has scoundrel and huntsman, um, very good on archers. Also pretty good on rogues. The huntsman is a little bit wasted on rogues, but you can still use it. You've got your throwing dagger. Um, so I love it, great item, and it pairs really well with the next item on the list, which is found in somebody else's basement. Um, you're going to find a dwarf wedding that was kind of ambushed and attacked, and you're going to find some stuff that will eventually lead you into this guy's basement. Um, in his basement, you will find a corroded chest. In that chest, you will find, uh, I guess, an invisibility potion, but you will also find Vaux Charlin. Vaux Charlene, Vaux Charlene, I don't know, you'll find this mask. Also, great item. Um, another finesse one, gives you five finesse, so once again, fulfills its own finesse requirement. If you took the minus five finesse earlier in Act 3, if you combine this with the other chess piece, that is ten extra finesse. Uh, and you cannot be so low on finesse that those two items together will not fulfill their own requirements. Uh, also gives you some wits, gives you some constitution, gives you some huntsman, gives you some sneaking. Very good. Another huge component to this is immunity to charmed and terrified. There aren't a lot of enemies in the game that charm you or terrify you, but there are a few in Act 4, and they are in the tough fights. Um, if you're like me and you like playing with some combat difficulty mods that give enemies extra uh, random abilities, Charm and Terrified effects come up a lot. There are a lot of people with uh, Terrify, or I think they're called Terror Grenades. Um, again, the names on here, I just read them, I don't say them out loud, so saying it out loud is weird, but Terror Grenades. Um, so being immune to Terrified and Charm is fantastic. The sneaking is nice if you uh, want to ambush somebody, uh, have somebody start combat late, gives you a little bit extra wiggle room there. But the five finesse, the three wits, just the immunity to Charm and Terrified, it's fantastic mask. Uh, goes great on rogues or archers, just phenomenal. Um, this one, I mean, you, you can put it on anybody, because it also gives the 5 finesse right off the bat to fill its own requirement. Just great, great item. And with all these finesse items that I'm talking about in here, um, you know, which uh, that was one of them there, we're going to actually throw this on Ife and just watch his damage go from max of 1290 to... Max of 13, 16, not a huge jump, 26 damage, and you're already dealing 1,000 plus points of damage isn't much, but it was better than his gold tier stuff that he already had. Like that, one had that one had plus 2 warfare, and this is still giving more damage. Anyway, uh, that's all great, and we're going to show you the uh, good finesse weapon that kind of ties together those last two uh, finesse boosting armor pieces, and that last finesse weapon is going to be found in the sewers. So when you get into the sewers, you're going to find a little boy locked in a cage here. I suggest you kill him, because he's not actually a little boy. Or he is, and then he shapeshifts. I'm not entirely sure. I knew at one point I had forgotten some of the lore. Uh, this isn't a lore video. This is a how to get these magic items video, or unique items videos. Uh, so the kid in the cage is going to be Karen. Uh, he's... I, I don't think it's pronounced Karen, but I'm going to pronounce it Karen, because... You know, they're just, he's a Karen. He's actually got, like, Karen haircut, blonde hair, shoulder length. He looks like a Karen. 
Uh, but he's got some minions that pop out. The one we're interested in is this uh, Kajun Frozen Heart. So you're going to loot that one's body. Uh, he's going to have some frost grenades. Those are also always there. But he's also going to have Vord Ember as a magic... Uh, I keep saying magic item. As a unique item. Um, it's going to be a crossbow. So we're actually going to swap to Ifen just to compare it to his current crossbow. Um, Ifen's crossbow is at level 18. This one's level 19. So the base damage is quite a bit higher. Actually, yeah, it is noticeably higher. I think that's more than a standard 19 crossbow. Uh, but it gives three finesse, some huntsmen, some ranged. And remember, ranged also gives crit chance. Um, it has a chance to set Frozen for two turns. Again, two turn crowd control. It's got that little bit of accuracy, so if you get it earlier when you're only at level 18, it's not a big deal because it does give you that accuracy. 20% lifesteal, phenomenal. Um, cryotherapy down there, not a huge deal. You can convert ice into magic armor if you're standing on ice. Can be situationally useful, but that's not why this is good. It's good because if you look at the item on the right, it does air damage as well, right? And it's like around a third of the damage that it does in physical damage, right? It's about a third. I think it's a little bit less, but it's roughly a third. I think 30%, actually. Um, I don't know the exact number. I'm not going to do that math. But the point is, it's around a third. If you look at the water damage that Lord Ember does, that's um, that's over half. That's uh, That's a significantly bigger percent of the physical damage being dealt as water damage. And then if you throw on a, I recommend a lightning rune, because you can add three more finesse with a, a frame on there. You can deal some more magic armor dealing damage with that. So similar to that first crossbow we looked at that required Iphen to be in the party, this one can knock down physical and magic armor pretty much at the same rate. Um, and that is insane. That's nutty. Um, if you throw on that lightning rune like I suggested, it can stun or freeze them if they're wet, so it pairs fantastically in a mixed damage party. Uh, the only thing that isn't phenomenal about this one is that it's only got a 5% crit chance, but honestly, by the time you get to this point in the game, you'll have so many different ways to get high crit chance, you're still gonna have like an 80% chance, even without this one being like a 14-20% to crit chance weapon. Um, and you can also just chug some Wits Potions. There's a vendor in the town square that commonly has medium and large Wits Potions. That'll increase your crit chance. Uh, but this thing just does insane damage. Uh, so once again, we're going to compare uh, damage here. So uh, this is actually, he swapped to that bow in the previous video. I did these a little out of order of when I got them. But if you look right there with this level 18 crossbow, with a rune slot, by the way, has a rune slot in it. Uh, this one does not have a rune slot in it, but it is one level higher, so, you know, semi-comparable. Uh, he's going to go from 828 damage, this thing is going to bump him up to 1,148. Now, the crit chance does drop, but it's still 70%. That's still a very good chance to crit. And if I throw on peace of mind, that's going to jump up to, like, 80, 81%. Um, and even with it being a higher level than me, because it's got that extra accuracy, I still have a 90% chance to hit. And I'm about to level up to 19 anyway on this point. So that minus accuracy is not going to be a big hindrance for much longer. Um, and then you can also just go and throw on... I don't have one ready to go, so let's go back to gear. Um, if I take out the rune in there, take that out of there, go to this one, throw that in. We're going to go from 1141 to 1272. Just fantastic and then over here now we have the air damage and the water damage and the physical damage so at uh, minimum that's going to deal a hundred damage to their magic armor 132 i'm just looking at the the base damage not the actual enhanced from our warfare and finesse but the base on there it's going to deal a hundred air and water damage to physical armor 132 to physical armor i think i said physical twice i meant magical the first time point is it's great it's going to knock down both armor simultaneously and then you can follow up with a knockdown arrow, or a tremor grenade, or you could throw chloroform, or you might just freeze them or stun them with the arrow itself. Lots of options for crowd control, and, and it lets any of your teammates, regardless of what magic or physical armor they want down, lets them wrap that up real quick. Now I am going to have one honorable mention item on this list. I don't think on this current save file I got it, but it's another... Oh, nope, I do. Right here. Uh, so this one you can find by Linderkem's Mansion. This is the honorable mention one because we have already gotten through 
ten items, because seven of them we just ran around and grabbed near the town square and the cathedral. Uh, this one I wanted to put on there, but I didn't, um, because it is five intelligence and it's a finesse one once again. I just felt like there were a few on there that already had that, and I feel like if you're going to get a plus intelligence finesse item, the uh, gloves over here are just better because of the intelligence. However, this one is very comparable because it is a finesse requirement. Um, this one is a level higher, so you get a little bit more armor out of it. Um, but I, I like the memory more. Um, I just, I'm a sucker for easy memory slots. Uh, but this one does have six initiative and two wits, which will give you eight total initiative. Um, it'll give you two necromancer, which could be nice, can respect and move some stuff around. It's got silencing stare, which is very nice. Um, it does combo well with another unique item not on the list. Uh, there's another one that sets silence as a status effect, as a negative penalty for the other benefits it gives. And this will grant you immunity to silence. So this one is an honorable mention. Av Leal. Um, there's a messenger owl lady next to Linderkin's mansion. If you find her, it's like in a trunk in the back of her room. You gotta sneak to get it. Or you could kill her and then just open it with a key. But those were our top ten best items in arcs for divinity original sin 2 um, i'm debating uh, making a top 10 craftable items but again like 90 percent of those are going to be magic arrows and then there'll be like some scrolls but most of them are just magic arrows because magic arrows are really good in this game um and there's not a whole lot else to craft it's just gonna be scrolls and arrows so i might be making that might be making something else if you have another uh video idea or question about divinity i've put in more hours than i care to admit um, so I could uh, make any... I, I like doing educational uh, Divinity videos. Uh, I had some combat showcase videos. Might be doing some wonky builds uh, in that in the future. But that is it for our top 10 ARCs best items in the game. If you have some items that you thought should have been on here that I didn't put on, feel free to comment that as well. Uh, but that is going to be it for this video. And I will see you guys in the next one.